Hi, we're with Gina Park. She's a product line manager at TI. And Gina is going to tell us a little bit about an unusual application for TI's DLP optics chip. Gina, we usually think of these things in terms of displays, but actually they have a good application in terms of high resolution machine vision. Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Um, there is a way to use the DLP chips for even more advanced light control than traditional uh, display applications. So DLP uh, used in a structured light application is the concept of projecting uh, strategic patterns of light on an object, uh, synchronizing it with a camera or sensor, and using triangulation algorithms to output 3D point cloud information. And what this becomes a very powerful tool, so then you have Z-depth or volumetric data to either do inspection analysis uh, in 3D, or quality control, or position and location. And why would someone pick a DLP structured light solution over some other technique? Well, it really comes down to speed and programmability. Uh, if you were to try and take a standard projector off the shelf and use it in this application, all you could feed it is 60 hertz video data. By using a uh, development platform from Texas Instruments, uh, what you're able to do is get up, in the case of the DLP Lightcrafter 4500, you can get up to 4,000 hertz um, and project binary patterns, and the user has quite a bit of programmability to either sync and trigger with the camera, change the pattern rates that go into the Lightcrafter uh, unit, as well as uh, change the LED colors uh, that might be more compatible with the object you're being measured. So there's a lot of programmability and capability uh, that DLP provides in the machine vision space. Compared to conventional structured light systems, um, would that affect either the um, complexity of the features you could discern or would it affect the speed at which you could do that? Actually it affects both. So uh, since TI offers a range of DLP chips from both low resolution to very high resolution, uh, the amount of accuracy of the object being measured can get down into the tens of microns. So you can get even uh, very fine accuracy of, of the either defect or object you're trying to measure. And then the pattern rates again, that enables uh, very high speed measurements so that even the uh, concept of factory automation where you've got uh, parts moving maybe in an assembly line, you're going to get those real time measurements uh, so you have in situ analysis of your, of your objects. Any particular um, machine vision applications that um, this lends itself to? Uh, there is quite a bit of adoption in the industrial sector. Uh, again, factory automation um, of parts. Uh, you have the inspection uh, and quality of, of goods being manufactured. And again, in the industrial space, a lot on the positioning. So uh, if you're trying to uh, make sure uh, objects or parts, maybe like uh, a car door, when you're installing that in the in the vehicle, making sure that there's perfect alignment uh, uh, when that door is getting installed. But there's also some uh, fun emerging spaces, uh, a lot in the health industry, where you need you may be scanning a tooth prior to making a replica for uh, for your uh, dental needs. <laughs> hearing aids, you have to measure the interior of the ear before making a hearing aid. Uh, podiatry, uh, measuring the foot to get your custom insoles. So, so um, both health and industrial tend to be very popular areas. And we do see some emergence in the security sector, uh, fingerprints, biometric face scans. Great, I'm sure people with flat feet everywhere are gonna appreciate this. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> Thanks, Gina. Thank you.